Okay, hi guys. So I'm going to show you how to write a function that checks to see if two strings are anagrams of one another. Um, it's going to take a string and a target, and it's going to return true if the target is an anagram of that string and false otherwise. So um, I'm going to show you a couple different solutions. For one solution, um, a very naive solution, would just be to generate all possible anagrams of that string, and then to check if the target is in that array, that resulting array. Um, that's not a very good solution because it is very uh, inefficient. It, the time complexity on that is quadratic, so uh, we're not going to write that one out. Um, so for our first solution is anagrams one. Uh, we're going to take a string and a target. For this solution, we're basically going to sort each string uh, and then check to see if they're equal to each other. Now, we're going to use a native JavaScript sort method, um, but because we can't sort strings, um, because that sorting function mutates the it's for arrays, it would mutate the array. Strings are not mutable. We're going to have to turn this string into an array first by splitting it. Um, so I'm going to split it, and then I will sort it, and then I will join it back together. And I'm going to do the same thing for uh, uh, the target. Okay, and then, okay, and then I'm going to return if s is equal to t, and that should work, there we go, and it works. So, um, what we could also do is, in case the string is, um, uppercase or lowercase and we don't want we, those to be different from one another, we could first uh, change it so we can say s is equal to s.2 upper, uh, actually no, we can just add it in here, s.2 uppercase, if we want it all uppercase or lower, doesn't matter. Um, and now our work. So now if we change this, that works. So, and the time complexity on this would actually be um, O of n log n because that is how long it takes to sort it. So, um, yeah, it is, it's okay. But we can do better. So, for our second solution, we're going to aim for a linear time complexity. It's going to be O, o of n. Oops. Oh my gosh. I cannot type today. All right. So, for this solution, uh, what is anagrams? Uh, takes a string and a target. We are basically going to um, create a histogram with the first uh, input, our string, and then we're going to take the second input and we are going to, so we're building up the histogram with S and then we're going to break it down with T and we're going to check if it's basically been neutralized so that every property in our histogram is going to have a value of zero. So uh, let this grim and it's going to be an object or a hash and we're going to loop through s and we're going to um, let Character equals s at i, and we are going to start populating our histogram. So if char is already in hist, 
then we're going to uh, increment that value and otherwise we're going to store it. Oops. Yeah, if that makes sense. So if we have not um, seen it yet, we're going to initialize it to 1. And if we have, then we're going to increment that value by 1. So now that we've looped the rest, we're going to loop through t, our target. And then we are going to do the same thing, uh, store our character, and we are going to check um, if character is in the, oops, yeah, his, then we, instead of adding one this time, we're going to subtract one. So we're going to decrement that value. Otherwise, if it's not in there, then we already know that it's not an anagram, so we're going to immediately return false. Okay. And then finally, if we've made it through all the way, we have to do a final check by looping through our histogram. So for the key in hist, we're going to check to see if that the uh, value at that key is zero. So if um, hist at key if that exists, if it's not zero, then we're going to immediately return false. Otherwise, we made it through, so we're going to return true. Okay. Um, yeah, does that make sense? Okay. So let's try it out for this I am going to implement that. Mm. Okay, so this is indeed true and this is indeed false. Okay, so basically, yeah, and you can see that the time complexity on this is linear because we loop through this. It's linear and it's looped through this and this. So it's 3n, which is still linear. Um, Alright, so um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions, or if I made any errors, or if there's a better solution, please let me know. And otherwise, thank you for watching. Okay, bye.